Hey, everybody, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid on a quiet Sunday evening. Great time to talk about photography, especially photography of one William H. Bonney. Um, in uh, one of the recent videos, we talked about the uh, photo study done in 1990 between a photo of Brushy Bill and the tintype of Billy the Kid. And uh, uh, the the feedback was interesting. But aside from any of that, uh, one of the concerns uh, and commonly repeated uh, issues with the tin type of Billy is that, oh, it's been retouched so much that it's unrecognizable as Billy the Kid. And so I wanted to go into a little bit of a history of the tin type. I will tell you that a lot of the research uh, belongs to uh, Mark Lee Gardner uh, in, uh, and from uh, an article in uh, True West magazine. And then I hunted down some of the photos. So thank you for uh, uh, for publishing that great publication. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at what is considered the quintessential tintype of Billy the Kid. And what you see on your screen is an actual photograph or scan of, of the tintype bought by Bill Koch for $2.3 million back in 2011, if memory serves. So this is it. As you can see, it's in... <laughs> I mean, it's just terrible condition. It looks like somebody ran a little motorcycle tire across Billy's <laughs> pelvis, <laughs> pelvic area. Um, you can barely see the uh, the stock of uh, his Winchester. Um, his hand is covered up. I mean, it's it's in bad shape and it's 140 years old. Um, but there's some interesting things here that we're going to take a look at. And this presumably has been touched up. Um, it restored, I guess, is what you would say. But let's take a uh, a closer look at the actual whoops, the actual tin type itself. And these are we're going to take a look at all four corners. You can see that somebody actually put a nail in each corner to mount this. I don't know who did that when it was done, but at some point this was displayed, and somebody drove some little tiny finishing nails most likely and you can see another hole in the upper corner and then of course there's one right here in this area and then you've got another one in this mess over here um yeah you would imagine that you know gosh somebody would realize what they had here the one authenticated photo of billy at that time anyway and would go hey maybe we shouldn't Put a bunch of holes in it but you can see along the edge here that the uh the image is flaking off it's flaking off here it's darkened substantially um and uh this this was uh somewhat restored because when it came from the lincoln county heritage trust having been displayed in lincoln it was so dark it was almost uh unrecognizable as a photograph uh, so this is the best that could be done, but this is the photo from whence everything else sprung. Um, and you would think that it would be easy enough for uh, people to say, okay, that's Billy the Kid. Look, there's Billy and the poster from one of my films right there. <laughs> that's Billy too, but that's a painting. But there are people that doubt the veracity of this tintype. In other words, they say, hey, there's no provenance to prove this was Billy. It was never identified by any contemporaries during the time that uh, Billy was alive. And so it might not be him. You hear that from photo collectors who want their photos to be of Billy the Kid and their photos don't look anything like this. And so it's easier for them to make a claim to say, hey, yeah, my photo doesn't look exactly like this guy, but that's because this guy is not Billy the Kid. And so you, you could imagine that, you know, if that <laughs> if you were trying to prove your photograph, you would try to and it doesn't look like this. You'd try to undercut the uh, foundation, the provenance of this photo. Um, the other people that try to knock this photo down, the uh, the integrity of the of the tintype, 
uh, are generally the folks, uh, it could be with John Miller, but mostly with Brushy Bill. And they say, well, again, this photo is unrecognizable. So of course it doesn't look a lot like Brushy when he was younger because this photo has been doctored and his photos have not. There's not really much sense in going into that because th those people have made their mind up. Um, but but they're, those are the two main camps of people that talk about the fact that this photo might not be a Billy the Kid. If it's not, uh, my uh, I don't know if I can call my buddy, but my acquaintance Randy Gaharo has a problem because his tin type his uh, croquet photo was uh, authenticated and matched to this one. And so and obviously there was other provenance along with the croquet photo. But, you know, you look at this person and then you look at the croquet Billy and you go, yeah, they look similar. So it could be them. Um, and so there's I guess there's a lot riding on whether this photo is actually of William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid, the noted desperado and outlaw of the great American Southwest. But there doesn't have to be. And that's uh, for one simple reason. And that is because, oops, let's stop that for a moment. That is because in uh, January 8, 1881, March 5th, 1881, and June 4th, 1881, a drawing was put into the Illustrated Police News about Billy the Kid. And the drawing was based on a photograph. Now, those dates, January 8, March 5, June 4, 1881, all before Billy the Kid was killed. So what was the photo that they, or the drawing that they put in the Police Gazette, Illustrated Police News, in order to show the, the country the man that was uh, first tried and then on the run? Well, it was this. Look familiar? Yeah, 1881, this was used in three separate news articles as a likeness of Billy the Kid. Some of one of his contemporaries had this drawing, had this photograph, and the Illustrated Police News got it, and Drew had somebody draw a, uh, you know, a black line drawing, black and white line drawing of Billy the Kid. Now, you can look at this and go, well, you know, it's not that great of a drawing. I, I think it's fine, but you can see right away that Billy's got the oval, like the eggplant-shaped face. That's what it reminds me of as an eggplant. And clearly his face was not like that. Uh, someone in the comments in a previous previous video had mentioned that most likely he moved during the photograph, which probably happened um, and created a slight deformity to the face. Um, but overall, you can see the design on the shirt. You can see the neckerchief, the vest, the cardigan open, the wider hips and narrow shoulders, um, the Winchester uh, they have this corrected, interestingly enough, corrected to be a uh, a right-hander, which uh, I find fascinating because the tintype itself uh, was, until 1954, considered to be a photograph of Billy the left-handed gun. Um, so somebody at the Illustrated Police News said, oh, it's a tintype. I get it. When I draw this, I've got to draw it the other way around and make this guy a right-hander. And uh, so there you go. If your concern over the validity of the tintype is, oh, no one ever authenticated it during his lifetime. Uh, well, that's that isn't true. Uh, it was used during his lifetime while he was on trial, after he was tried and uh, after he fled Lincoln uh, right up until his death or not, depending on what you believe in Fort Sumner, January 14, 1880. Uh, January, uh, July, January 14. <laughs> Man, I'm thinking of something else. July 14, 1881. Sorry about that. So there it is from the uh, Illustrated Police News. That's a picture of Billy. All right. 
So I think if you're reasonable, open-minded, you'd go, okay, this is 99 and some tenths percent sure to be Billy the Kid. I mean, I, I can I can accept that that's what he looked like. But the other uh, factor in there is this restoration and how much of the of the tin type was changed and is it is the modern version unrecognizable as being William H. Bonney? And so for that, you would have a real challenging time because you'd have to know who did the restoration. You'd have to talk to them or see their notes. Um, generally, a restoration would be a cleaning, right? We want to clean the image and protect it, but we don't want to actually change the image. But uh, lucky for us, very lucky for us, actually, the uh, practice of the carte de visite and again, I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I actually listened on Google about how to do it. Um, but a carte de visit was a way back in the 1880s uh, and even earlier to make copies of photographs. And even uh, Pauli de Maxwell mentioned in her interview with Walter uh, Noble Burns in 1926 that it was not a good photo of Billy. He never dressed in such rough clothes when he was in Fort Sumner. Uh, it was always much more neatly dressed. Uh, and and yes, the photos were lost, but many copies have been made of it. Well, that's the way the uh, copy was made with a carte de visite, um, essentially a photographic process of a photograph and then mounted on a like a card stock. And so we have this one. And based upon everything that you can, um, you can date, you know, the type of uh, photography, the type of uh, matting, the way it was mounted, it dates back to the very early 1880s, 1881, 82, maybe 1885, but somewhere around there. So we know that this carte de visit is a, uh, a representation of what the original tin type looked like, right? So this, we know that this is what the tin type was, before anybody restored it, touched it, stored it, get their fingers all over it, whatever. So let's take a look at that. All right. So here it is. There's the famous William H. Bonney. You can see that this, uh, this cart uh, has some damage to it itself. It looks like it's got a tear here and maybe a tear or water spot here. It's been folded. It's got a hole in the bottom. Um, it's, you know, the, the binding along the top is ragged. But the image itself, generally, pretty well preserved. So this, you're staring at now a an absolute duplication, replication of the original tintype, unadulterated, at least as far as we can tell. We don't see that anybody made any changes to this. So I thought one of the interesting things to do here would be to look at these two images side by side. And so we're going to do that. All right. Whoops. Hang on a second. Well, there we go. Let me see if I can close this in and bring the, oops, bring this over. There we go. Okay. So now you've got the historic William H. Bonney, untouched, un, un, uh, restored, with the restored, cleaned up version of the tin type uh, as it sits today. How does it match up? Well, interestingly enough, there are some differences here. Um, the first thing that I want would want to uh, take a closer look at is the face. Because it struck me, I mean, clearly, at least clearly to me, it's the exact same person. But the face does look different. And in fact, one of the things that looks dramatically different to me are the, just the thinness of the lips 
um, and the uh, kind of the receding eyes. I mean, this is a poorly done tintype already. So you can imagine somebody went in and maybe tried to clean this up, maybe tried to define the eyes more. You can see in, in the tintype that the nose is more accentuated. You can actually see the, the lines of the nose where you cannot on the cart. Um, you can see the nostrils, but you cannot even see the outline of the nose. That could be due to the photographic process which with which they used. Or it could be that somebody somehow really wanted to enhance this thing. Um, my my tendency to believe is that this is just not a very high resolution uh, copy of the tin type, and so we're missing some of the details. But it does look a little different to me. The face is not an absolute identical match, as far as I'm concerned. But but it's again clearly to me at least the exact same person. So let's continue and look, and we can see that. Uh, Again, loss of detail in the cart here in the fingers, uh, whereas you can very clearly see them separated in the tintype, um, not so much. Uh, you can see where the lines would be between the fingers, but not really so much in the cart. If we go down to Billy's Winchester, here's where you can start to you know, recover some parts of the original photo because in the current tintype, there's really nothing left uh you know uh, past the past the hammer um you can't you can't see anything and you can't see billy's pants almost none of his pants you can see half of his left boot uh and uh and most of his right boot but uh, much much clearer image here i don't know that there's any great um discoveries to be made but it is nice to see that the uh, that the cart does show us some things that the tintype can no longer do. You can see the posing stand here, and there's a guy online. Uh, who knows? He might be watching. I doubt it. But and he swears that this is a death photo of Billy the Kid. In other words, this uh, or let's do this one. <laughs> this stand props him up just because there was a patent for a stand for dead people, so the Billy must be dead here. Um, but this stand props him up, and he's dead. And here. Instead of this being a dark shadow, Billy peed all over himself when he got shot by Garrett. And uh, I can't remember what the other ones were. Something leaking out of the eyes and something along those lines. But there's there's a lot of uh, amateur retouched photos, colorized photos, and people add lots of stuff. Um, this is the best image we have of what was taken down in front of... Uh, on the street or somewhere near Beaver Smith Saloon, late 1879, or according to Paulie de Maxwell, 1880. Um, Billy's got the gambler's pinky ring on in both photographs. Neither one has been corrected uh, to make him a right-hander as he was. And uh, you, you see the flash of the button, I guess, or the design of the shirt or, I don't know, pocket watch chain. Uh, maybe there, but you don't see it so much here on the cart. So um, it looks to me like the cart is a uh, an acceptable resolution copy of the tin type, but detail is absolutely lost in it because of the fact that it's a copy of an original and it is not an original. Um, but if you had uh, been friends with Billy the Kid, and he had handed you a uh, one of those four images that some probably paid about a buck for. Um, what you would have gotten would look something very much like this back then without the tears and the rips and those kind of things. Uh, the uh, photographer, you know, lighting is not terrific uh, on the original tintype. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's lots of real dark areas, but you know, they did the best they could. They got this one photo so that we can look now and go, hey, that was the guy that 140 plus years later, people are still talking about. Um, and so at least from that standpoint, uh, really, really cool stuff. 
Um, so there you go. If you find a cart de visit, um, you uh, you might want to buy it. I believe the one I just showed you sold for about seventeen and a half thousand dollars about a decade ago. Uh, so it's not a two point three million dollar uh, investment because it's not an original. It's just a photograph of an original, but done at the time. The tin type, as noted, was expected to sell for about $400,000 at auction, uh, but Bill Koch wound up being bid up to $2.3 million for the, at that time, the one and only uh, known photograph of Billy the Kid. And based on the drawing that was used in the Illustrated Police News, we can be very, very certain that this is Billy the Kid. Um so there. Now, we're not done yet. Uh, the There is another image to take a look at, and that is from the book cover of The Life of Pat Garrett and the Taming of the Border Outlaw. And uh, I only saw this for the first time about two weeks ago in one of the online Billy the Kid groups. Uh, the book was written by John Milton Scandland in 1908, written and published in 1908. And this picture of Billy is on the back cover. And I thought it interesting uh, for a couple of reasons. So we're going to take a look at that one alongside the uh, original tintype. Let's have a look at that. All right. So on the left here, you see, I'm not sure how I got all these little marks in there. I'd like to get rid of them, but that was probably me trying to move some. There we go. So this is the back cover of The Life of Pat Garrett and The Taming of the Border Outlaw, written by John Milton Scanlon, 1908. And uh, I don't know about the quote at the bottom, labor produces all the labor party or something, but this is William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid. And it's clear in 1908 that they still knew where to go to get a photograph of Billy. What's not clear to me at all is how his face changed so dramatically in this what had to be a retouched or edited photograph. If you just look at Billy's lips and his mouth here, although I know it's pixelated, you can see it looks like he has really, really full lips and his mouth is not open, um, which does to me, it almost doesn't look anything like him. It looks like somebody completely different. I don't think that there's a smoking gun where you say, oh, there's another photo of Billy and here he looks better. Uh, but I do think somebody did some work to this photograph before they uh, used it on this uh, book cover. The other thing you'll see when we zoom out is that this Billy is holding a hand-drawn... <laughs> 1873 Winchester. His this is not the Winchester that you saw from Billy. In fact, let me get you a different photo so you can uh let me get this one out of the way. This one out of the way. Yeah, there we go. Let's bring this one out over here. There we go. And now you have a better kind of sense of. Yeah, I mean, Billy's rifle was turned with the uh, uh, with the trigger and trigger guard out. Um, this one clearly is not. Uh, Billy's rifle was uh, almost straight up and down. This one clearly is not. There's no detail on this. If you uh, move in closer, you'll see it's just kind of a black blob. And it's it looks to me like somebody just drew it in. I'm not sure why. Um, unless they, you know, in their editing process or something, they <laughs> they cut the gun out or they couldn't do it. But the whole image and the shape and the proportions are wrong. It's really weird. Billy's legs are unusually long here. He's got like wide hips, which he does here. But then his hips taper in and he's got, you know, the kind of, you know, Superman legs here with the muscles coming out. And then his boots look funny. It looks like they probably drew in what would be the right boot. But in this case, uh, since the, the image is uncorrected, it looks like they drew in the left boot and just drew in a, a foot there somewhere where they thought it should go. And they probably drew in the right boot as well. Um, the, the the pants, the gun, the, you know, these things all look pretty good from here. It It appears to me that they were able to keep 
uh, you know, the, the torso and most of that as part of the photograph, probably the pants, they probably cut and edited along there. They clearly have cut the top of the hat off. As you can see, it's like razor sharp there. Um, so somebody really hacked this photograph or tintype up. Um, and, uh, and they did not do a very good job of it back then. I don't know. I've never read the book, so I don't know how, how valuable the book is, but the image on the book, uh, is, is very, very strange, very strange. Billy's all stretched out. Uh, he, uh, his head almost even appears to be at a different angle, and uh, he did, he's got drawn on boots and a gun and maybe even a drawn on hat with a razor sharp point on the end. Uh, so uh, that's what they <laughs> if you had picked up this book in 1908, you would have looked at Bonnie and said, oh, well, he's got very full lips, long legs, probably could play, uh, you know, shooting guard in the NBA. And uh, look, he doesn't even have a real rifle. He's got a he's got a toy or a drawn on one. Um, so interesting, interesting, interesting. So uh, that's uh, the important, I guess, history of the very famous tin type of Billy the Kid. The question always comes up, are there others? And there, there has to be, uh, there doesn't have to be, but it's very, very likely that there are more than this one photo is the croquet photo billy and everybody that uh, says it is i don't know i've never i mean i've looked at it i've seen the the special i've talked to randy a couple times um it could be them it certainly could be i've got my question about the trees having no leaves and a very narrow window of time early september when that could have happened but the answer is i don't know um, that photo at least has some provenance that ties it to a family member of charlie bowdry and uh, if the location is right, it, it, it could have been taken down on the Tunstall Ranch. Uh, but what about the other photos? There's Billy smoking cigar, playing cards. There's Billy and all the regulators with the chuck wagon out there um, on the range that supposedly had George Co. identify them. Um, there's Billy up on some rock escarpment uh, looking down over Lincoln or Capitan or somewhere. I mean, there's tons of them. And I do believe that somewhere out there, probably amongst the photos that we already have, in other words, that are, are right, people have already uh, offered up as being Billy the Kid, I think that there's, I'm sure there's one and maybe more that are him. The problem is going to be, can you prove it? And to this point, other than Randy Gaharo, who's uh, got did get authentication on his photo. Um, other than that, no one has been able to do it. And so it comes down to a, hey, do you just want to take somebody's word for it that this is a photo of Billy? Uh, if you go on eBay, you'll see all kinds of <laughs> uh, tin types of Billy the Kid that sell for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. They don't sell for that. <laughs> That's what people ask. Just go do an eBay search for Billy the Kid photo or tin type, and you'll you can waste as much money as you want on those with absolute zero provenance. Um, I can't believe they're even allowed to be listed, and I wonder if anyone has ever actually bought one. Um, but uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough as we go forward. 140. One years on now from the demise of Billy, uh, it just gets tougher and tougher. And the proof could be out there, but if it is, the people that have it don't even know it. Most likely, it's in an attic somewhere. It's in a trunk. It's in a basement. It's somewhere that you would never expect. It's in Minnesota, uh, or it's in South Florida because somebody moved and took somebody else's possessions. And so people aren't even really looking for it. And I think that that's the thing that would hold back uh, the possibility of authenticating any of these other photos. But the, the quest to do so should continue. And uh, that's why I've invited people to submit their photos here that they believe to be the kid. I'll happily show them. I'll at least give you my assessment as an absolute uh, you know, amateur 
not not even I don't even reach amateur status uh, for photo authentication or identification, but I can look with my eyes and say, you look this part looks like Billy, this part doesn't. Um, and uh, because who knows, somebody may have one. Some of them you look at, there are some photo, uh, I guess I'd call them collectors who offer their collections and they've got multiple 10, 15, 20 photos of Billy the Kid, most of them of all different people. I mean, clearly identifiably different people. And that's where you, you look at those and you go, oh, what, what's the sense? Like why wade through this if this person hasn't even done enough research to pick out which ones legitimately could be Billy the Kid? Um, because I, it doesn't, doesn't do anybody a service to say, oh, I found a photo album and look, there's 20 pictures of Billy the Kid and every one of them is a different person. So you have that. But if you think you have a photo of the authentic William H. Bonney slash Billy the Kid, please feel free, if you're so inclined, to submit it. Uh, you can uh, message me in the comments below. Or you can email to billythekidridesagain at gmail.com. Now, if you're sending me something that says, hey, don't post this anywhere, make sure you say don't, don't post this anywhere. I normally would ask you in return uh, anyway about that. But uh, just to be clear, if you want it presented like wild blue, uh, but you don't want to be identified because you don't want a bunch of crazies hitting you up or t telling you you're out of your mind, then that's fine too. I'm happy to present it for you. If you want to come on the show and present it and talk about the what you feel the provenance is for that uh, photograph, you can do that too. Here are some things to look for when you're looking for a photo or when you're trying to identify a photo as the one and only Billy the Kid. Billy had dramatically sloping shoulders. As you can see from this photo, now this shoulder is much, much lower than the other one. And that's just the way he was kind of slouched over and standing. But you can see there's no, I mean, I'm not bragging, but I have pretty square shoulders. They come out and then they go down. Billy had dramatically sloping shoulders, almost no shoulder here to even hold his sweater on. Um, that's just a physical characteristic. Characteristic. If this photo was taken in 1880, then we've got a Billy the Kid that's somewhere, somewhere between 18 and 25 years old. Uh, Billy identified himself or somebody identified him in the 1880 census in Lincoln County as being 25 years old. Um, recent evidence points to the fact that he could have been as young as uh, 18 here and fought in the Lincoln County War when he was 16. Go back and look at the Drew Gomber episode if you want more about that. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing, although tougher to tell here, is the wider hips, hips wider than the shoulders. And uh, so if you were to draw a line from the shoulder to the hip, it would actually kind of come out. Here's the end of the shoulder. There's the hip. So you get this kind of platform, kind of a, I don't know, is that a <laughs> trapezoid or something? I don't know my... Uh, uh, shapes, but you would have uh, that kind of effect. So you can, if you accept this photo as being Billy Bonnie, you can discard any photo of anybody that's built like this uh, because it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. You know, the, the bones have developed uh, and, uh, and growth essentially stops it, you know, somewhere in the late teens so Billy was not going to get real buff and square shouldered in the meantime. Um, so that was his body style. So you'll want to look for that. You know, the big hands and small wrists. I mean, I, I don't know where the myth came from. I don't know if it's true. His hands look pretty average size to me. Um, or, or I'm sorry, big wrists and small hands. His hands look pretty average. His fingers look kind of thick. So I don't I don't think you can tell anything. Uh, from that. And I don't even know exactly where that uh, myth came from. Um, absolutely kind of a rounded chin and face, um, you know, not a square jaw with a, uh, a uh, what do you call that? A cleft. Uh, no, it's not a cleft palate, like a, a, a dimple in the chin, like brushy bill. I mean, that does not exist at all in this photo. 
Um, the uh, detached eardrums, which you can still see here. So the eardrums come up to meet the face and then the, the whole ear hangs a little below that attachment point. So you can look for those. Um, kind of the thin and uh, uh, long, somewhat straight eyebrows. Um, you can look for that. The nose itself, relatively thin, unlike mine, uh, but you know, relatively straight down, so not a wide, widely set nose. And uh, if you can match up your photo to any sort of static object and come up with a an approximate height, believe that Billy was somewhere around five foot eight inches tall, hundred and whatever pounds doesn't look like a big guy. Um, so those would be some key things. And those can help you if you have a photograph in front of you and you see some big stocky guy, um, you know, with a, with a big, thick, muscular neck and, uh, and a thick beard, you know, and, and he's 18 years old. Yeah, it's probably not Billy. There's lots of scrunched face, scrunched faced teenagers in the American West. And researchers, uh, genealogist Sue Stevenson once ran the number for me. I asked her how many men between 18 and 25 lived in the United States in, in 1880 when they took the, cent, the uh, census. And the number, I don't remember the exact number. I'd have to go back, but it was over 7 million, 7,165,000 you know, young men between 18 and 25. A lot of them had kind of scrunched up faces and droopy shoulders and those kind of things. So not every photo of a guy wearing a cardigan is Billy the Kid. Not every photo of a guy wearing a pinky, gambler's pinky ring is Billy the Kid. Those were relatively popular. Not every photo of a guy, uh, you know, who's uh, got kind of beady eyes is Billy the Kid. In fact, almost all of them are not. But somewhere out there, there is one or more that is Billy and uh, if there's any way to prove it, gosh, we'd love to see it. So keep searching, keep sending them in, and keep watching all things Billy the Kid. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button. I know some of you are going, F you, I don't like it. But for those of you that do, the like button is really helpful in getting the video out to other people who have not subscribed to the channel. So I would greatly appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, that would be uh, greatly appreciated too. And feel free to share the video anywhere. Um, good, good stuff coming up this week in that I am headed to Bonita, Arizona. And we are going to set the new gravestone for Wendy Cahill, the first uh, victim of Billy the Kid. We'll be filming the whole odyssey for you. Tiny little lost Bonita Cemetery. We have permission to remark the grave. We're going to give Wendy the... Uh, recognition i don't know if he deserves it but i think as part of the billy the kid universe the history deserves this remembrance and people who are interested in the story of billy deserve this remembrance and so that's really it because i really did question you know why are we marking the grave of a guy who was a bully and probably would have beat billy to death if he had the chance but i think the point is that this was a significant event that happened in the life of a young man and really launched him on his way into New Mexico and into the Lincoln County War and further into history. And so there should be some more recognition of it. Additionally, thanks to the great work of Joshua Slatton, we have what we believe is the exact spot, I mean, within a few meters of where the act, the fight took place, um, where the, where the, the, tussle where Wendy Cahill pinned Billy down and Billy shot him took place. I'm going to attempt to get you some pictures of that and some of the other, uh, you know, key areas from that area, uh, Camp Grant, uh, Arizona. So we'll be doing that uh, later this week. Should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. We'll bring you that video sometime next week, but I'll post some pictures here in the community tab. And, uh, oh, and before we go, yeah, one last, uh, fun thing i did put up a little poll uh that's what she said or that's what he said i get it i put up a little poll that's not the kind of thing that guys would generally want to say <laughs> but on the community tab i was curious when you 
make a comment on one of the videos is your expectation or your desire that the host meaning me or the guest uh, respond to you or do you just want to leave your opinion for whoever or do you want to have a dialogue with other people watching the show uh, so uh, just 109 votes in uh, about 24 hours half of you said yes uh, you want the host to expect or you want the host to uh, comment, provide some feedback on your comment. And uh, 31% of you said no. So that's 32 votes or so said, nope, don't, don't care about that. Um, I put in, <laughs> I put in another choice. I couldn't give a damn what he does, meaning me. And 17% of you took up the charge on that. So that'd be about 18 votes. Couldn't give a crap what I do. Uh, when it comes to the comments, and that's cool. I'm good with that. Uh, and 2%, which in this case would be two and maybe, maybe, maybe three votes, I think just two, said only if he agrees with me. The thing is that the people that really only want a comment if I agree with them didn't answer this because there's a lot more of them. They want their opinion to be validated or they just want to steamroll anybody else or any other information or evidence um I had somebody say uh brushy bill was billy the kid and i'll never ever ever never never change my mind okay then don't but that's not that's somebody that would only want affirmation of hey i agree with you and believe with in, in what you said not hey do you maybe want to take a look at some of this other evidence? So uh, thanks for your answers. You can still go and answer that. Based on that, I, I think I'm going to continue appropriately as I can to answer the comments, um, you know, provide any other information. I can't answer all of them because I don't see all of them, but as many as I can. And you can always email me at billythekidridesagain at gmail.com if the comments don't do it for you. And that will do it for this episode of all things Billy. We'll see you from Bonita, Arizona, Windy Cahill.